Welcome to another Z Hut tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how to build a universal remote using an Arduino board. Now, this is a real easy project, but not very practical. If you want a universal remote, you should probably just go on eBay or Amazon and buy one. But if you want to do some experimenting and have some fun, this is a cool project to play around with. And I use infrared with a lot of my projects because it makes things a lot easier than having to reach over and twist buttons and all that stuff. So what we'll do is first I'll uh, give you a walkthrough on the, the circuit here. And then uh, we'll go over to the computer and I'll, I'll show you the sketch how the, the programming works but to start with there are seven types of remotes that the uh, library that we're using for this works with and they are as follows sony nec rc5 rc6 panasonic lg and jvc now, if you have other type of remote, this might pick it up and work, but I'm not sure. Now, I have a Sony, uh, several NEC remotes, and several RC5 remotes, but I don't have the RC6, Panasonic, LG, or JVC remotes. But um, I'm imagining they're similar to the other ones, so this tutorial should help you with everything, but... What we will be focusing on is the Sony's, the NEC's, and the RC5's because I have them and we get to the programming I'll walk you through how to program all of those into this. So to start with, here's the main thing. This is the IR receiver. Now you can order these lots of different places. Um, Amazon, eBay, or I buy lots of things off of Deals Extreme, and they have these too. And there's a link to all those places on the website. And uh, this runs at about 3 volts, so that's why we have this resistor here. Cut it down. I put my meter on, and I think it was like 3.3 .3 or 3.4 volts. And that's within toleration, so it works fine. And... Um, you can rob these out of old VCRs, DVD players, anything that has a remote control for will have one of these in it. And they're not too hard to figure out how they work, even if you can't find the schematic on it in the data sheet. And uh, actually, I think my next tutorial will be on how, how to uh, go through and figure out which pin is which. And then here we have the infrared transmitter. And uh, I robbed one out of a old remote control that didn't work anymore. And I tried that, it worked, it worked fine, but it wasn't putting out much range. So I tried something else. I had an old security camera that had infrared on it for nighttime use. So it was the, uh, an IR night vision camera and I desoldered these out of it and I hooked that up and you could run more voltage to it and it's brighter and this works perfect otherwise you can order them or rob it out of an old remote control that don't work now from there it goes down I got a transistor because the pin off the board you know it makes it work but what I found is running the straight 5 volts off the board through a transistor, you got more range out of it. So I would recommend using the transistor. And that's just a standard 2N2222, one of the most common transistors on the planet. But just about any NPN small signal fast switching transistor will work. Um, I just chose the 2N2222 because I got tons of them. And... They're easy, easy to find. Next, um, 
We got all the jumpers running down. I use surface mount jumpers because I don't like wires hanging out, but I was having some trouble getting everything to configure, so I had to use some regular jumper wires here to run to the buttons. And what I have is five buttons here. This one turns my TV on and off. These two are the channel down and channel up. And these two is the volume down and volume up. Now you could run as many buttons as you want um, as long as you have pens on your board. But there is another way to hook this up too if you wanted to have a crap load of buttons and only use one pen on your Arduino board. It is possible. What you do is you hook all the buttons up with resistance values and you run it down to the same pen and you'd want to use one of your analog pens which is over here on the Arduino and then um, in the sketch just just do uh, some if and if else statements on the um, analog read values because if you have a bunch of these daisy chained together with resistances between them Every one that you'd push would have a different resistance value. And that's how you can get away with using one pin. But I was only hooking up five buttons and just wanted to do it real quick. So I just used five uh, digital pins on the Arduino and it works. It works great. All right. Uh, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and we'll jump over to the computer and... Uh, give you a run through on the sketches um, on how to use I've like I said I got the Sony the NEC and the RC5 but the rest of them should be similar the only big difference I found is the Sony sends the signal three times and where the NEC and RC5 I do believe too only sends it once I know the NEC only sends the code once and uh, oh the schematic for this and the sketch, everything you can find uh, on my website. And I'll have a link to that in the description below. So please go there and check that out. And uh, you can download the picture of the schematic because um, if you download it, you can open it up on your computer and expand it so you can see the connections easier. All right, well, I'll see you just in, second, in a second over at the computer, and we'll take a look at the sketch. Okay, so before we get down to the sketch itself, the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to download the IR Remote Library if you don't already have it. Um, to find that, just uh, look in the description down below and go to my website, and um, that'll bring you right to the, the project page for this and there's a link on there to download the IR remote. Um, so to start with after you get the, the library downloaded and installed uh, make sure your Arduino board is uh, plugged into the computer and you've got the circuit all built and then what you'll do is you go under file and then go to examples and then you'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll find this IR remote. You go in here and what we're going to need to do first is actually get the codes for the remote. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the IR receive dump. So you just click on this right here. But I've already got the window open. And here's the sketch right here. It's not too long of a sketch. It uploads pretty quick to your board. So what you want to do is this number here, um, by default it was on pin 11. But I have my receiver on pin 4, so if you have your receiver on a different pin, just uh, just change this number here. And that's all you got to do. Otherwise, just leave everything else alone. Um, you don't want to change anything or it ain't going to work right. So, just let's see here. Yep, this is the right one. All right. So, all I'm going to do is grab a remote, and I'll grab, this is my Sony first. And make sure you got your... Um, serial monitor open, then point your remote towards the IR receiver on your circuit and just push whatever button that you want to use. So um, say I wanted to turn the volume down, so I would 
first hit the volume down button and uh, it's saying an unknown device but it is a Sony here I'll push a different button there see it's picking it up now um, some reason the volume button it isn't picking it up as a Sony but it does pick up by pushed a different button and it comes up Sony so then I'm gonna grab the um, this is the RCA 5 if I remember right and I'll push a button on there I'm just gonna push the volume up again yep there's the RC5 and there's the values and then my NEC remote and I'll push the volume up on that <coughs> And as you can see, it says right here, this is the last one, the NEC. It says it decoded it, and it's an NEC. Now, these are the two numbers we want. This is the actual code that the remote send in, and it's in a hex number. And this is the bits. And you'll need these two numbers in the sketch. So what you can do is, after you push all the buttons you want, um, just copy and paste this into, like, note, Notepad or WordPad, and then um, maybe comment on each one you know so you remember what the buttons for and the nice thing about this particular universal remote if you're building it yourself you can have different buttons programmed for different remotes without having to change anything in the sketch you just have to put in the 12 bit in RC5 or NEC in 32 bit and then the code that goes associated with it alright so with that we've got some remote buttons here decoded so what we'll do next is you'll have to go back again into your file go down to examples whoops and you go back to the IR remote and you want to do the IR send demo and when you open that up it brings us up here and this is a real short real short sketch now by default it's set up for Sony so what you do is it's set up at 12 bit but let's see here the Sony we're using is 20 bit so you would change that to 20 and then <clears throat> excuse me then control C to copy it and you come over here and leave the the zero and the X because it doesn't put the zero and X when it's writing it out here but you have to have the zero X for the hex number and that'll work for on all these remotes any one of them you'll want to have the zero X in front of whatever numbers decoded over here so we'll paste that in and now let's see here this will just continuously send that so what you'd want to do is put um, put a if statement that would uh, for a value for a value that um, when you push a button say the button goes low then it activates this and if you're playing around with this I'm sure you know how to do that so I'm not going to go into that part of the sketch I'm just going to show you how to put the, uh, the codes in so you just you know take the um, actually for the Sony you would have to leave this for loop in there because it sends the code three times for it to work properly and as far as I know that's only on the Sony's so you just you know have if um, button one is digital or digital read low you know then go and execute this part of the program so if we were going to change and we weren't using the Sony let's say we were using the NEC what you would do is you would just highlight the Sony and then put NEC in and then let's see here's their NRC number and it's 32 bit so you change this to 32 and then we'll control C to copy and then again remember to leave the 0x and just paste that in so now if you had this set up, you know, for when the button <coughs> is digitally read low, you would execute this command, but for the NEC, you're going to want to delete the for loop. Just delete that out and remember to take one of your brackets out as well. So now, 
whenever you put push that particular push button it would send this code and then your next one would be an um, else if statement and you know you'd program in the next button you want to use and like I said you can use any of these in this so that you don't have to switch back and forth between protocols you just you know in your next else if statement you know if you wanted it Sony you just put send Sony or send our C5 put your hex number in and put the bit value and that's all there is to it. I mean, this is super easy. Like I said, it's not the most practical. I mean, a universal remote. You go on eBay or Amazon and you can get a cheap one for like five bucks. But if you wanted to build your own, you know, press your friends and or just play around, you know, have some fun with the, the IR, the infrared. This is a fun project. And uh, I mostly use the infrared by programming the Arduino to read my old remote controls that I have le left over from old electronics I no longer have. Because it is nice not to have to reach over and push push buttons and turn knobs with your project. So with that, <coughs> I would appreciate a thumbs up if you liked the video. And um, more information on this, the library, the, the circuit. Um, I'm not going to list the sketch, I don't think. Maybe I'll throw one of them on there for an example, but the sketch is in the in the examples so just go over to the website and check that out so have fun building and have a great day thanks for joining us at the z hut and hope to see you again